What is up guys? Thank you for stopping by Steady Chaos Productions. I am your man Steady Chaos and so today I want to try to make as quick and concise a video as I can relating to LG OLEDs and Sony OLED televisions. Now as you may or may not know, LG Display provides all the various vendors and companies out there from Sony to Vizio raw OLED displays. So that is to say, LG dominates and controls the market. They produce all of the OLED panels and then they sell them to Sony, Vizio, what have you. And it is at that point that you know these various companies will install their own software their own CPU, things like that into the TV to create differing picture qualities, but they all start with the same LG OLED panel. And so with that in mind, I thought to myself, because I'm a relatively new LG C10 owner, my first OLED ever, I bought back in April of 2020, very happy so far. But when I first bought it, the first thing on my mind, of course, was image retention, burn in, how do I prevent uh, image retention and burn-in. How do I make sure that my TV continues to run optimally? So I noticed when I went into the picture settings for my LG OLED when I first bought it, there were what's called OLED screensaver functions. Pixel refresher for LG OLED and on Sony OLEDs it's called panel refresh. They're one and the same even though they're named differently. They do the same thing. And then on the LGs there's also what's called screen shift and also what's called logo luminance adjustment. So I thought to myself, I don't exactly know what these functions do. So I'm going to research them to see how I should go about uh, deploying these settings to protect my LG C10 for many years to come. And one curious thing I noticed is that when I searched pixel and panel refresh, I got all kinds of people on various message boards, whether it's Reddit or ABS forums, saying that they've gotten conflicting messages from the community, from LG techs when they call LG and ask questions. Some techs, some people will say that you can run pixel refresher as often as you'd like. It's not harmful for the TV, go for it. And then other techs and other members on these various message boards will say you should not be running pixel or panel refresh multiple times per week, month, or even year, as in doing so, you could actually damage your TV. You could actually shorten its lifespan. So I'm like, wow, I need to get to the bottom of this. I need to figure out what it is that I have to do to protect my TV. I certainly don't want to hurt my TV in an attempt to protect it, right? So I don't want to be running pixel refresher if I don't have to. So I did hours and hours of research over the last couple of weeks, trying to come to some sort of consensus within my own mind, how I should deploy pixel refresher on my LG C10. And this also applies, like I said, with panel refresh on Sony OLEDs. And I think I've come to some sort of conclusion. Um, it is somewhat open-ended because I have not spoken with an LG tech and LG does not have an official stance on pixel, the use of pixel refresh manually, that is, one way or another. Um, they say it's there for you to use on their websites. They say it's an anti-burn and an anti-image retention feature, but there's no disclaimer saying that you shouldn't use it manually so many times per week, month, year, what have you. Sony's a bit of a different story. <laughs> so I wanna jump into this video and share with you what I have learned and ultimately what my recommendation is to you, the YouTube community who also own very valuable uh, Sony and LG OLED TVs. So without further delay, let's jump right in, shall we? All right guys, so quickly I wanted to show you what I mean by the, the confusion surrounding pixel and panel refresh. So if, if you were to Google pixel panel refresh, one of the first things you're gonna see is message boards like Reddit, and you're gonna see pixel refresher, the verdict. And then you see people like John John 1239 they'll say, I've seen conflicting posts in regards to pixel refresh function on LG OLEDs. Some say that they damage the panel if used too often. Others say the feature wouldn't be there if it deliberately caused damage to the panel. What are the facts in regards to this? And then you can follow this thread if you like, but there's really no definitive answer in this thread. It's just a bunch of people spitballing. So I'm like, I need to get something more definitive. I need to get some kind of official post from ABS forum or something from LG or Sony letting me know one way or another if I should be using this function on my LG C10. So before we jump into that, I think it's 
it's handy or beneficial to know exactly how an OLED panel works. When it comes to OLED panels, things can get really complicated really quickly as far as electrical engineering is concerned, and that is not really the focus of this particular video. I want to keep things as digestible and user-friendly as possible so that you can quickly understand how an OLED panel works in its most basic terms. So really that you only need to concern yourself with five layers of an OLED TV, the substrate, the anode, the conductive layer, the emissive layer, and the cathode. The substrate just basically supports the OLED panel itself. And then you have the anode and the cathode, um, kind of reducing it to the most basic terms. All they do is exchange voltage or current. Uh, they send current between them through the conductive and emissive layers. The conductive and emissive layers hold or house the organic molecules or polymers. And when these organic molecules or polymers are subjected to current from the anode or cathode, they light up, they produce photons. So in a nutshell, that's basically how an OLED TV works. Now, keep in mind, this is called an OLED TV. It's an organic light emitting diode. That means it uses organic material within the TV itself to create photons or light. When this organic material receives a current or voltage via the anode or cathode, that is when the reaction creates photons or light. Now, the more electricity that is applied or more voltage or current that is applied to this organic material, the more brightness you will have. One of the negatives or byproducts of this reaction is the fact that because you're using organic materials to create emissive pixels on a per pixel basis, meaning each pixel can illuminate itself, because you're using organic materials to do that, you subject the TV to some measure of decay over time because these are organic materials. That's how light is being created. This reaction, the organic material inevitably has to decay. That is unlike an LED or LCD TV, which uses an LED or light emitting diode backlight to illuminate the pixels. If you have a situation where say you're constantly watching CNN or Fox News or some channel with a bright, bright logo on the corner, if you're always subjecting those same pixels on your panel to that bright, bright icon day after day after day, it's bright, bright red or bright, bright white, and those pixels are always subjected to a strong voltage or current, and they're always being energized, and they're always emitting a ton of light, and they're always to some degree decaying more than the rest of the screen, you can get what's called image retention, or you can get what's called sort of an uneven screen uniformity. Ideally, the voltage across the entire OLED screen is consistent or at some sort of baseline or equilibrium. And when you have baseline or equilibrium, that is when you get good screen uniformity. That's when you get good brightness distribution across your entire screen. But because OLEDs, again, use that organic material that is subject to decay, then you can get a screen that has a lot of uneven wear over time, which shows that ghosting or that image retention that everybody dreads. And image retention is sort of a transient problem. It's something that you have that logo in the corner, you change the channel, you still kind of see it for a few minutes. Usually if you vary up your content, you watch a movie, you go to YouTube, you do something else, eventually that retention will fade. The problem is if day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, you continue to watch that same channel with the same logo, that retention can continue to build up and then it can develop what's called screen burn-in. So basically the retention has gotten so bad, uh, the voltage on your screen has gotten so out of whack, um, there's been so much uneven decay on your OLED panel in that one icon area that it is now a permanent fixture on your screen. No amount of uh, anti-burn-in features, pixel panel refresh, screen shift, logo luminance adjustment, none of that is gonna fix burn-in. It burn-in is, it's just that, it's burnt in to your screen. It is not transient, it is permanent. So those are the sort of the distinctions between image retention and screen burn-in. Now to give you a quick sort of technical definition and rundown as to what all these various tools are at the user's disposal to combat image retention, uh, I went to LG.com and looked at what they list as the, the main functions the user can use to combat screen retention or burn-in. So the very first thing they list is screen shift. 
This technology reduces the potential of retention when the screen image is fixed for a long period of time. Screen shift moves the pixels of the static area. And it does this process automatically. You can't even tell as the user that the screen shift is happening. It just shifts the pixels over a few to the right or left or down or up. And this sort of alleviates some pixels that are exposed to the same sort of logo or brightness for long periods of time. Then they have what's called logo luminance adjustment. Logo luminance adjustment basically detects a logo like CNN or Fox News that's really bright in the corner of your screen like we just talked about. And it says to itself, okay, this has been on the screen for a long period of time. It's extremely, extremely bright in comparison to the rest of the screen. It would be in this TV's best interest to kind of make that logo a little bit more dim, maybe slightly more transparent. Again, this is not really noticeable to the user. This is a relatively new feature that started coming out in 2019 with the LG C9 model. And then they have, again, the big one. The big one that this whole video is on, pixel refresher, which is also known as panel refresher on Sony OLEDs, like I said. The pixel refresh feature built into LG OLED TVs automatically detects pixel deterioration through periodic scanning, compensating for it as needed. It also senses any TFT thin film transistor voltage changes during power off to detect and correct pixel degradation by comparing it with a set reference value. So basically all it's saying there is when the pixel refresher runs, it is going through a process, the TV is off, it's going through a process where it evaluates all the pixels across the screen in vertical batches. And it looks for voltage and current inconsistencies across those pixels. Any voltage or current inconsistencies that it detects, it will in effect burn those high voltages back down to a reference level or equilibrium across the screen so that your screen is once again uniform so that you don't have any image retention so that you don't have any uh, uniformity issues, you know, brightness in one area, ghosting in another area. So you have a nice even display and even panel. And then once those uh, voltages or currents are burnt down to an equilibrium, then the panel can safely adjust the brightness back up to a nice bright uniform level across the entire screen. That is in a nutshell what pixel refresh or panel refresh does. Now you're probably asking yourself, well, yes, you can run this function manually, but is it automated? Does this function work in the background? Yes, it does actually. So if you go, they talk about your automatic pixel refresh for effortless image retention recovery. So there are two types of different pixel refresh on LG OLEDs, on the C9, C10, B10, whatever you have, but the last couple of years models. So after four hours of cumulative use, there will be what's called a short term, about seven to 10 minute long pixel refresh that the TV will do once you turn it off. So if you watch TV for two hours one day and then the next day you watch for two more, then you turn the TV off, the TV will say, okay, it's been four hours of cumulative viewing time. It is time for us to run a quick pixel refresh. And the process, again, is just measuring voltages. It is trying to remove image retention. It's a quick seven to, seven to 10 minute process. However, after 2,000 hours of cumulative use and then every subsequent 2,000 hour period after that, so 4,000, 6,000, 8,000 hours of viewing time and so on, that is when the longer one hour long pixel refresh process will run when you turn off the TV. Now LG goes on to say, you may see some vertical lines on the screen during this process. However, this is not a malfunction. It is designed to remove image retention by scrolling a horizontal bar down the screen. So at this point, we have a pretty good idea of how OLED panels produce photons or light. They subject organic materials to a current across the screen, which produces the light. Uh, one of the unfortunate byproducts of this is the fact that the organic material decays over time and it can decay unevenly. So now we, we know, we just saw, we have pixel refresher or panel refresh, we have screen shift, we have logo luminous adjustment. We have all these weapons at our disposal as OLED owners to try to make sure that we don't get image retention, to try to make sure that we don't get voltage inconsistencies, to try to make sure that we don't get uh, problems with screen uniformity. So then that begs the question, should we be running pixel refresh routinely, manually? We know it's running in the background. We know it's running after every four hours of use. We know that it's running after 2000 hours of use. So should we as users in between that be running it ourselves? Well, this is where things get kind of interesting. 
there is an official FAQ in LG C10 G10 owner's thread section on AVS forum that breaks down all of the specs uh, for the LG C10 and G10, everything to do with these panels, uh, improvements from the prior year, maybe some areas where the TV has taken a step back with HDMI 2.1 and 40 gigabits per second. We don't wanna get into that. But one interesting thing is they talk about pixel refresh. Now, if you scroll down, in this official FAQ on AVS forum, what is the purpose of pixel refresh? We already know it's to make sure that you have nice and clean image, um, an image that has good uniformity, an image that has a consistent voltage across the screen so that you don't have brightness and consistency so that you don't have image retention that could lead to burn-in, right? What pixel refresh actually does. So the whole pixel refresh process is done in vertical batches which is what causes the panel banding and why bands move over time. If the pixel refresh would not run, the brightness uniformity of the panel would be affected in time. Over months of use, the panel would just get zones that are dimmer than others. The pixel refresh has a big downside though. It shortens the lifespan of the panel and this is italicized to put emphasis on this point. It shortens the lifespan of the panel. The operation of leveling down uh, of the voltage current values is a big stress for the panel. This is why you should not be using the pixel refresh function repeatedly or at short intervals of time. The automatic run at 2000 hours is just enough and it would ensure a long lifespan of the panel. So that is why I say and why I come to the conclusion myself that I am not going to run pixel or panel refresh on my TV unless I notice a problem. If you have image retention that does not seem to be going away when you vary up your viewing content, that is when you would wanna run a manual pixel refresh. Otherwise, do not run manual pixel refresh on a consistent basis. There's no need to run it anyway. If your screen is functioning as it should, if you don't have uniformity issues, why would you even bother running it? Don't try to be fancy and preemptive with pixel or panel refresh when you don't have to be, okay? And that's basically what AVS Forum is saying here with their official LG C10 and G10 FAQ section. And they go on to say, it is not advisable to manually run pixel refresh without some serious reason, such as big panel non-uniformity, so dirty screen effect, splotches or brighter darker content, vertical banding, scene and content, or other types of panel non-uniformity issues. But you may be saying to yourself, okay, Steady Chaos, that's great, but you're just reading to me what AVS Forum said. Why don't you give me something official from LG or Sony? Okay, well, I can do that. The problem is LG has not specifically come out one way or another and said, okay, OLED owners only run pixel refresh if you absolutely have to or OLED owners go ahead and feel free to run pixel refresh as often as you want. They haven't said one way or another. So that is why there's so much consternation. That is why there's so much confusion. But as we said, Sony also uses OLED panels from LG and they have the same thing as LG's pixel refresh. It's called panel refresh. And if you go to Sony's website and you search panel refresh for their OLED TVs, they have an interesting disclaimer. So what does the panel refresh on my OLED TV do, okay? Panel refresh automatically runs to adjust the uniformity of the OLED TV screen when you use it for long periods of time. So it's, it's doing the same thing as pixel refresh, like we said. If you go down a little bit further, warning in bright red lettering, don't perform panel refresh more than once a year as it may affect the panel's usable life. So for me, this is pretty much all the evidence I need that you should not be subjecting your TV to repeated bouts of pixel or panel refresh, manually that is, because it's unnecessary. At best, it's not gonna do anything because you probably don't have an issue anyway. At worst, it could produce a situation where you lessen the lifespan of your TV. So clearly from Sony, they're saying, Unless you have a problem, try not to run panel refresh more than once a year. And from AVS Forum as well, which is a highly respected site from their official FAQ section regarding the LG C10 and G10, they say do not run pixel refresh unless absolutely necessary, okay? 
So that is pretty much all I have regarding this topic. I know I've gone on long enough. It can be a pretty um, intricate and complicated topic, especially if you're just a layman's user and you Google pixel refresh really quick, you're gonna get all kinds of varying information. There are a few gems, like we just went over AVS forums and the official Sony website, but otherwise there's a ton of confusion out there. So my advice, my official advice, once again, Pixel and panel refresh on your Sony OLED and your LG OLEDs, absolutely fine to use if you have an image retention problem. Otherwise, just leave your TV be and it will automatically run uh, pixel and panel refresh routinely in the background. You won't even notice and you will have a nice good screen uniformity, hopefully for many years to come, okay? If you have found this video helpful in any way, please leave a like and let me know in the comment section down below. What are your thoughts on this often convoluted and complicated topic? Do you use pixel refresh and panel refresh routinely and has it damaged your TV? Or conversely, do you use pixel and panel refresh routinely and it hasn't damaged your TV? Let me know, I am really curious. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. All right guys, that's gonna do it for me. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and we will see you guys soon for more things LG OLED. Peace.